Welcome to the Smart Wood Shop. So today working on the Polk Total Station Ultralight, I have cut out the spreaders and the two sides using uh, the templates as well as a router with a, an upcut spiral bit and a guide or pattern guide. I got to moving so quick with this that I accidentally on one of the sides made two identical ones. And what I should have done was left the middle uncut the way I ended up doing on this one. This will be cut out later uh, when it's more assembled and this will be where the miter saw goes. So got moving a little quick, wasn't thinking. Got a little waste there, but I'll figure out a use for it or I've got an extra piece for the next total station. So in, in doing this, keeping clean, keeping the sawdust picked up when you're routing, particularly when you're plowing out quite a bit um, of wood the way I'm doing here, um, I, I keep my shop clean. It, one, it's safe. Two, the, the blades cut better. Uh, you're, you've got the router riding on, on a template and the bearing guide pushing up. and You don't want sawdust in the, in the way. And, uh, causing your, your cut to, to not be as clean. So I use my uh, vacuum system with that triple manifold that I told you about before, uh, set up with blast gates, and I have two of them hooked up to the table saw to keep that clean, the top and the bottom. And then I have my floater hose here, which I use for routing and sanding and all of that. And I'll just close those two blast gates on the table saw and open this one. Now no matter how much you dust collect from the tool, which is the number one thing you should do, you're still gonna have uh, sawdust that, uh, you know, ends up around the site and you wanna keep it clean. So I have another vacuum, and it doesn't matter which vacuum it is. Could be uh, another fest tool. In this case, it's a fine, and it could be a shop back, but it's just a, a hose, a floater hose, and then when I'm done cutting, I uh, will vacuum up and then you know take the screws out and and move on to the next piece but if with the with the extra vacuum i either need to go over there and turn it on or i need to put it up here right next to me so that i can reach down and turn it off and on when i put it here it's kind of in the way over there it's just that extra few steps the lack of efficiency and so what i have and i've shown this before it's a fast cap tool it is a remote control for the vacuum. So I just have this remote control that is Velcroed onto the hose and it, they provide the Velcro strap that goes through some loops in the remote control. And all I have to do is push the button. Vacuum comes on, do my vacuuming, and then push the button again and the vacuum goes off and then I just leave the hose hanging here. Now this is a, a pretty neat little deal. It's fairly inexpensive, and all it is is a box that's plugged into your outlet, and then you plug your vacuum into that. There's no switches or anything you need to mess with over there. You just turn your vacuum on, but as long as that box isn't letting any current go through, your vacuum is off, and then you just simply push this remote, and it flips the switch in the box, your vacuum comes on and off. And again, it doesn't matter which vacuum you have, any of them will work and it'll help keep your job site clean. So that is the FastCap RT, it's remote control for vacuum RT. I will um, have a link down below to my, uh, I think I'll put this tool in my Amazon store so it'll be quick. You can uh, grab that link there. Of course, you know, just to be clear, Amazon does share a little bit with us uh, if you purchase uh, through our account. But even if you don't, just search for, you can go straight to FastCap or to Amazon and you can just search for the um, FastCap remote control switch. Well, if you enjoy dropping into the shop with me and see what's going on, you can subscribe. And when you subscribe, ring the bell. Thanks for taking the time to watch. Have a great day.